We got our start in the early days of the web as a group of disaffected webmasters who were using a piece of freely available web software, but uh, I had difficulty with it. We were fixing bugs. We were sharing these bug fixes with each other, like uh, tr baseball trading cards, if you will, these, these patches, as it's called. And uh, one day we discovered the group that put out the web server that we were using uh, basically folded when all their developers left to go join a brand new company called Netscape. So uh, a bunch of us decided that, hey, we're dependent upon this software. We don't want to become full-time web server developers, but we want to be able to, to, to use this thing that we've had for free and be able to improve it and all that kind of stuff. Um, we looked at the license of the code, and uh, the license said, here's the software. Do whatever you want with it. Uh, don't blame us when it breaks, right? Uh, and uh, we said, hey, that's a pretty good bargain. Why don't we pass the same bargain on to the next group of people, right? Uh, so we formed a, a mailing list, right? Uh, and this was mostly, again, webmasters and people working at some early internet service providers or, or website design companies or places like Amazon or the Internet Movie Database. Uh, and we combined our patches together and decided to call it a, a patchy server for that reason um, and, uh, and went forward. And really the model of how we worked was based upon uh, uh, kind of us as a group as peers proposing ideas, you know, vetting each other's uh, ideas and patches and fixing bugs, you know, as a, as a group, as a team. Um, none of us had met in person, well, some of us had met, but as a, as a group, we didn't meet in person until 1998, really three years after we got our start. And long after, by the way, we'd become the most predominant web server product on the planet. Um, and yet at this time, still no money, no dime, not direct to us from this piece of open source software, but plenty of us you know, uh, uh, made our living off of building things on top of this piece. And that's really the story, I think, of, of kind of successful open source projects writ large, which is <clears throat> people working together on, on common technologies to solve common problems so they can go off and make money on other places or so they can have fun. They can try new ideas. They can, you know, uh, be experimental, right? Um, and that's, that's really the same story of Apache and, and of Linux and, and all these other open source projects. It turns out to be not that hard to, to be able to work together when people have the same common goal, which is, Let's build a product that, that does all this great stuff. Um, one thing that we did do that <clears throat> made it easy to make some of these decisions was to have a very uh, modular API, which made it easy for us to be able to say, hey, if you want that special cool feature, do it as a separate thing and, and make it successful, and we'll decide whether to bring this into the product once it's become successful or not. Right? Another key thing that plays into this that is true of all open source projects is that an open source license, like we had on ours, uh, that Linux has, et cetera, carries with it something called the right to fork, which means that if I were to go all, you know, Colonel Kurtz on, on the project and start saying, we're gonna go here, you know, and no one else wanted to follow, well, all of those other people could decide to pick up the code go and go start a different project somewhere else. You know, if they couldn't kick me out, which is probably what they would have tried to do first, right? Um, this right to fork, you know, means that you don't have to have any tolerance for dictators. You don't have to deal with people who make bad technical decisions. Uh, uh, you know, you can take that future into your hands. And, and if you find a group of other people who agree with you, you can go on and create a new project around it. So I think that rule, that right to fork, limits the kind of excesses that we see whenever we start to talk about how do groups make decisions and, and, and conflict arises, how do you deal with that conflict? And it means that you, your style of leadership isn't so much one of control and plotting you know, moves ahead of time, but instead one of um, being able to, to get people on your side, convince them that, that you're, the, you're gonna value their efforts, value their, the, the contributions that they make.